I am Nerio the Second. I am a visual artist, poet, student. Um, I don't know if I consider myself a b-boy, but I like to b-boy and I like graffiti. You're performing on the show, um, doing some spoken word. H how did you get into that? I started off writing what was called battle lyrics, okay. battle rhymes. It was a part of the hip hop culture, this whole art form of disrespecting each other and right. really gaining respect. It was all like, it's kind of like a sport. For the most part, I spent my high school days alone in the library or during my math class writing lyrics, writing battle lyrics. Unlike the slam, the battle is more in your face and taking everything about that person and flipping it upside down and humiliating them <laughs> to the point that you want to make them quit what they're doing. <laughs> When was it? 2003, I saw a poster walking down Osborne Village. Um, said a slam on Tuesdays at uh, Drake's Cafe. And I figured, oh, well, maybe I could just kick one of my raps a cappella. I mean, maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. Decided to try it. And. Sure enough, at the end of the night, I ended up with the top scores in the slam and ended up winning the 50 bucks. So I was like, whoa, this is fun. Everyone there was interested in what I had to say. And this was a different crowd from the regular hip hop right. crowd. And I don't know if they really understood what was going on there because they right. don't really hang out with 40-year-old people right. reading poetry, right. drinking tea and mocha and all that. <laughs> I was used to rhyming in the back alleys at four in the morning, right. freestyling, and I step into this setting where it's just it's different. Two different cultures, spoken word and hip-hop, I find. I find with spoken word, it encompasses all things. It's more universal than hip-hop is. Like, I find within hip-hop culture, you have to fit a certain mold in order to be accepted sometimes. Spoken word, you can totally be who you are. That's a funny thing, because a lot of the people that I met within the hip hop culture don't really know that I do spoken word. Hmm. But the spoken word people like know all about me. <laughs> right. So, yeah. What for you have been like some career highlights? Um, going to Vancouver in, in 2005, I, I wasn't supposed to make the team at all because I choked on the final night. But someone had dropped out, that's what happened. And so I was able to take that spot. And I'm so glad that I got on that team and got to be heard. Uh, it was my first national slam. And I remember the first poem that I, that I did, it was Dear Santa. Um, I didn't know how powerful it was until I, I, I delivered it in Vancouver. And when I delivered it, it just destroyed the crowd. I had a standing ovation at the end of the night. There was um, a poet, his name's Tugstar from UK. He came to me and he was like, I just came from 11 hour flight and uh, I was falling asleep throughout the whole night and that shit woke me up. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I'm glad, I'm honored, I'm honored to. That have, sounds you know, awesome. To phase you with that, and I, I realized right there and then, like, holy shit, this is powerful. I didn't know, you know, I was just writing for for my own sake, and then I realized how much people get affected by this. The other highlight would probably be beating the system. <laughs> I went to Cincinnati, Ohio, to battle, um, and. While I was there, you know, enjoying my time, having a few drinks with the people, went to the washroom and met this cat from New Jersey who happened to be selling Mary Jane. I tried to bring Mary over the border back home to Winnipeg and I should have known. I wasn't thinking straight, but uh, I got arrested 
at the U.S. Canada Customs at the Winnipeg Airport. Had to go to court. I spoke to legal aid, and the lady who was trying to defend me had to know everything about me, about my background, where I went to school, where I went to work, what do I do as a hobby. I mentioned that I go to school at Red River, I work at Metal Tech Industries as a water jet operator, blah, blah, blah. I paint, I travel extensively, I do slam poetry. And so when it came time to defending me, and you know, this is what he did, this is everything about him, she mentions slam poetry, and the judge, you know, it's like, okay. Oh, so, yeah, he works. He, he goes to school at Red River, okay. Yeah, he works at Metal Tech Industries, and he does slam poetry. Slam poetry, what? Please explain, what is, what is slam poetry? And I say, oh, well, it's sort of like a fusion between literature and performance art. I suppose. Uh, it encompasses everything from song, lyrics, yada, yada, yada. I was explaining. And he said, oh, that's interesting. Uh, do you write your own poetry? And I said, yes. Yes, I write my own poetry. And he's like, do you, do, you, do you know your poetry? I'm like, what do you mean, do I know my poetry? Do I memorize my poetry? And he's like, yes. You know it off the top of your head. I said, I don't know off the top of my head. I know it in my heart. And he said, OK, well, go ahead. In this courtroom, you know, surrounded by people who got arrested for whatever cause, possession of firearms, right. possession of narcotics, blah, blah, blah. And I say, okay. I look up at the judge and I say, you know, when I was a kid,